Successful individuals often have a dependable and encouraging group of friends, whereas those who fail tend to have friends who are untrustworthy. This is not a coincidence. Success builds networks for collective advancement, while failure can trap individuals in a deep chasm. But why does this happen? If you are striving for success, but feel alone and powerless, do not worry. In the next 10 minutes, I will share valuable insights on socializing and opening up to others that can help you form a strong circle of friends. Trust me, with these tips, you will be on your way to success. Hello everyone. Welcome to Social Insights. Our channel focuses on social skills, habit formation, storytelling, and dating tips. We update every Wednesday and Saturday with valuable advice and techniques for improving your social life. If it's your first time visiting our channel, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss any exciting videos. Let's get started. Have you ever wondered what the essence of social relationships is? Before delving into the truth, I'd like to share a story about rhesus monkeys with you. American developmental psychologist Harry Harlow conducted a famous psychological experiment. He separated newborn monkeys from their mothers and provided them with two substitutes' mothers. Both surrogate mothers had similar appearances and contained light bulbs inside to provide warmth. However, one was made of wire and had a milk bottle attached, while the other was made of wood covered in sponge cloth but without a milk bottle. In short, one was a soft mother, while the other was a milk mother. At first, the baby monkeys preferred the milk mother simply because it provided milk. But after just a few days, they would only go to her for nourishment when hungry, most of their time was spent with the soft mother. They would climb onto her body and lie on her chest occasionally stroking her face or rubbing against her abdomen for several hours as if she offered more security. Harlow conducted this cruel experiment because he wanted to uncover human emotional truths through primates that are highly like humans. At that time, mainstream theories believed that infants formed attachments to parents because they met basic material needs such as food and clothing necessary for survival. Some psychologists even thought that providing sufficient food alone could satisfy children's need for love and advised mothers not to be too intimate with their children so as not to foster excessive dependence on them which might hinder independence later in life. According to this theory, we can also explain our social relationships. There are two extremes in interpersonal relationships, nurturing relationships, which provide emotional support and resources and are beneficial for us, and depleting relationships, which offer no support and instead make our lives worse. Based on this, we can categorize interpersonal relationships into four quadrants. 1. Nurturing relationships We all know that having friends like Doryman is incredibly beneficial. They are the type of friends that provide emotional support without judgment. They offer solutions to any struggles you may be facing and even help you find job opportunities when times are tough. These types of friends are hard to come by, and if you have one, cherish them. 2. Venting relationships Finding Doryman can be a challenge. However, when it comes to choosing between functional and emotional support, emotional support should take priority. These supporting friends are known as besties. In times of difficulty at work or personal struggles, a perfect solution may not exist. What you need most is someone to listen, understand, and empathize with you. In such moments, a friend who can empathize with you is invaluable, rather than a logical and rational robot. This is also the reason why some people struggle as best friends, they tend to analyze, give advice, and be logical but lack the warmth of empathy. 3. Problem-solving relationships Some friends are great at empathizing with your emotions, while others excel at finding practical solutions to your problems. For instance, if you're struggling with a challenging work environment or facing difficulties at your job, these people may provide practical advice and help you find a solution. For instance, they might encourage you to prepare for changes and offer to review your resume to see if they can help you find a new job. Although these friends might not be as emotionally close to you, their practical support can be incredibly valuable. 4. Depleting relationships It's crucial to steer clear of individuals who refuse to lend an ear or offer constructive advice. These people may even resort to hurtful remarks and act toxic. These folks are only interested in their own perspectives and take pleasure in criticizing others. Now, take a moment to think about your friend's circle. Who are the nurturing friends? Who are the confidants? Who are the problem-solving companions? And who are the acquaintances you should keep at a distance? 
If you've already realized the importance of this, do you know how to cultivate and manage your circle of friends? If you enjoyed this episode, kindly subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications to stay updated on our latest videos. We don't want you to miss out on any interesting content. Let's get to the point. If you're interested in knowing how to manage a high-quality social circle but unsure about what to do specifically, then you need to remember the 223 rule and jot it down in your notebook. So, what is the 223 rule? It consists of two keywords, two sentences, and three social effects. Firstly, let's talk about the two keywords. The first keyword is selection. Do you remember our classification of social relationships? Close friends and best friends are the types of friends we prioritize. They share a common characteristic of having a high affinity, being more attentive, considerate, and understanding of your emotions and needs. If you have such friends in your social circle, make sure to hold on to them tightly. The second keyword is attraction. The similarity is the primary factor in social rules. Sometimes you may wonder why you always encounter certain types of people. Is it merely a coincidence? No, it's because we emit certain wrong signals that create an illusion of we belong to the same category in the other person's mind. To change this passive situation, you need to change your approach and actively attract the people you like, rather than passively filtering and accepting the people you come across. Next, let's focus on two sentences. If you desire nourishing social relationships, you must first understand how to focus on people, not just events. The specific approach is simple. When a friend confides in you, just remember these two sentences. The first sentence is, what happened? Tell me. Behind this is genuine care for the person, and everyone enjoys being cared for and paid attention to. The second sentence is, how do you feel about that, people need emotional support, and your role is to express concern, making them feel warmth and touched. Lastly, let's discuss the three social effects. 1. Halo Effect The halo is not an objective honor or ability you possess, but rather how others perceive you based on the points they like and find appealing. For example, when your best friend introduces you to a new friend, they will surely mention at least one similarity between the two of you, such as being both alumni of Stanford and both having a passion for singing. If the other person recognizes and acknowledges this aspect of you, it will be magnified to the point of overlooking other issues and flaws. This is where the saying you look good, so everything you say is right comes into play. 2. Exposure Effect Exposure means that a person frequently appears within your field of view. Psychological studies have found that the more a person is exposed to you, the greater the likelihood of becoming good friends. For instance, your best friend often mentions her friend Kate in front of you, saying that Kate is also obsessed with a TV series and likes the male lead. Kate also uses the same brand of moisturizer and face wash, thinking they are excellent. Although Kate hasn't appeared in front of you yet, her presence has firmly rooted itself in your mind. 3. Ideal Self-Effect This means that you become the ideal self in the other person's mind, where you share certain aspects with them but excel a little bit more in those areas. For example, Kate's aspiration is to become an outstanding baker, and coincidentally, you happen to know how to bake mouthwatering croissants. In this case, Kate would be happy to have you as a good friend. In summary, to successfully manage a strong social circle, you need to carefully select, take initiative, seek commonalities and matching points with others, increase the frequency of appearing in their view, and become their ideal self in certain aspects. At the appropriate moment, express your care and love to them. That's what we've shared today. Do you find the methods mentioned above useful? Feel free to share your experiences and insights in the comments section. If you have any questions and seek answers, please leave a message. This is Social Insights, a reliable source for social skills, habit formation, storytelling, and dating tips. See you in the next episode.